we're going to take a little trip into the workshop and look at some of my learners' work. I can't showcase them in it, so you won't hear them speaking and you won't see them, but I wanted to show the type of work they're currently carrying out. These are level two full-time learners. In the first part of the video presentation, one of them fits an arc fault detection device strapped to a miniature RCBO from Crabtree. In the second video presentation, we look at a learner doing a combined insulation resistance test where he's linked together the live conductors and he's testing them to earth and then he's testing between live conductors, a requirement by BS7671. We then look in the final part of the presentation a learner fitting some LED down lights. Those lights were kindly donated to us by Collingwood and he got that experience as well. One that wasn't part of the syllabus, it's not a requirement to fit LED down lights, but obviously as we move into industry, that's the sort of thing our students will be doing as and when they get an apprenticeship. Let's cut to that video now. So one of my level two full-time learners came to me in the workshop and said, Gary, can I fit an arc fault detection device? Of course you can, I said. So this is him now going about his first ever fitting of an arc fault detection device. The main switch, is not in this case an RCD main switch, it's just a normal double pole or linked main switch. The additional protection will be provided by the RCBO attached to the side of the AFDD unit. As you can see, the learner is using his torque screwdriver and felt it would be easier to get the connections in the top of the arc fault detection device by having it actually out of the consumer unit's mounting. So he's going to nip them up into position away from the consumer's unit, both the line and neutral conductors in the top of the AFDD, before clipping it back into position on the rail at the back of this star breaker Crabtree consumer's unit. So we're just finishing off nipping up the line and neutral conductors before positioning it onto the star breaker distribution board DIN rail. So it clips onto position, so it's there and in position. Now we can go about sorting out the conductors, in this case the fly lead for the neutral part of the RCBO needs connecting to the neutral bar. So now we need to set up the torque screwdriver to the appropriate newton meters of torque. For this distribution board we'll be using 1.7 newton meters for both the neutral and earth bars and that is now set up and ready to go. So we now need to adjust the torque screwdriver for the appropriate torque setting for the arc fault detection device. So we can tighten it up both the line and neutral conductors. I hope you can see from this short video presentation how simple it was to fit the combined arc fault detection device and miniature RCBO on this Crabtree design. So with a different learner now carrying out the insulation resistance test, he's testing between live conductors first, achieving a reading greater than the machine can read, greater than 999 mega ohms. He's now going to do the combined live conductors, line and neutral, together to earth, as required in the paperwork for BS7671. He's piggybacked the leads for the neutral and line conductor together, and he's testing those together to earth. And you can see he's achieved a reading greater than 999 mega ohms. And he can record that in his paperwork under the live conductors to earth box. Apologize before anyone says why my learners are not using a hole saw and say a battery drill in order to cut this out. As part of one of their assessments, they have to use a pad saw in order to cut out a single or twin socket box. So this was good practice for that. The learner is wearing goggles and a dust mask at the time of this exercise. He's cut a hole for an LED downlighter. With the holes cut in one millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable, 
we're wiring an additional two LED down lights provided to the college by Collingwood. A wonderful gift allowing us to fit these LED down lights. The learner said after he'd done this, he appreciated it and was a good experience, one that he thought would be valuable when he got on site. So we just finished fitting them by pushing them into the ceiling and we completed a pair of LED down lights. So I hope you enjoyed a look at that. So that's the sort of things we're trying to do here at college, as we always say, me, Joe, Matt, we always say we're trying to stay on or ahead of the curve. So our learners got to fit our fault detection devices, do a combined insulation resistance test and fit LED down lights. So again, we're hoping we're keeping up and we hope this video has been some help.